Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another episode of Unpopular Opinions for you guys today. In this video, you guys drop in whatever unpopular opinions that you guys have related to Chelsea. And we sit there, we look at your opinions and we discuss whether we think you're onto something or whether we think you're smoking sawdust. Now, we've still got plenty of other unpopular opinions that you guys drop down on my Twitter handle. So, if you guys haven't already dropped one, drop it down in the thread as well. And if you guys also have an unpopular opinion that we haven't already discussed, leave it in the comment section too because we will be taking YouTube comments as well. And yeah, before we start this video, if you guys haven't done so, already smash that like button hit that subscribe button and while you're at it go and get that hat trick and press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content because yes this international break is dead but we are going to try and keep you guys entertained throughout it i might be doing an england v island watch along if you guys want to see that as well let, let us know down in the comment section below and yeah before i waffle on for any longer let's go straight into unpopular opinions Chelsea were better than Liverpool and Man City in 2013-14. The main reasons we didn't win the league was because we didn't have a proper striker as well as it being a transitional season. Again, I'm not really sure if this is, um, this is an unpopular opinion. I think everyone universally agrees on that. Uh, we did. I think we beat Liverpool home and away and Man City home and away that season. I remember us demolishing Man United, Spurs at home, the 6-0 at home at Arsenal as well. And we did, have a ma we did have a very strong squad everywhere but up front. The problem was we had three uh, second-tier strikers and we didn't have a first-tier striker. By that point, we already knew Fernando Torres wasn't the answer to our problems. Samuel Eto'o was a hit and hope. It was more of a panic buy because we didn't really bring a striker in towards the end of the transfer window. Denver Bar as well barely got any opportunities, but he was there for the moments. Really, he didn't really he didn't really have any long barrels of consistency either. Eto as well was proli was prolific at home. Away from home, though, I don't think he scored a single goal for us that season. So yeah. I don't think it's an unpopular opinion, but I am going to agree with you. We were better than Liverpool and Man City and everywhere but up front. But again, that's exactly where we lost the title. And especially with the last few seasons, you lot know exactly how bad we can be without a proper striker. So yeah, I agree with this opinion, but I don't think this one's unpopular. Unpopular opinion. CH is the best creative player in the Premier League right now. You might be jumping the gun a little bit. I will say that. I don't want to throw it out there too early, but he is definitely up there already. His left foot is ridiculous. His technique is absolutely crazy. And every time he delivers a ball, he delivers it into a dangerous area of the field. So I agree that he's up there. Is he the most creative player in the Premier League right now? I mean, we're going to have to wait and see. There's still players like Harry Kane. There's still players like Kevin De Bruyne. Even players that aren't getting any game time like Meza Ozil who have amazing creative abilities. So he is definitely up there. We will see towards the end of the season. This is a very fair and popular opinion though. I do like this and I also really do hope this becomes a popular opinion towards the end of the season. But let's not jump the gun here too early. So I'm going to say he's up there for now. We can win the Champions League. Again, speaking about jumping the gun. But yeah, unpopular opinion. We can win the Champions League. Why not? That's, that's the whole thing I put for this season because this whole season is a madness and I can see all sorts of unpredictable BS happening throughout the season. So, yeah, why not? Why can't we win the Champions League? I think we've got the best squad for it in years, at least since 2014-15. And even then, we kind of bottled it at the last 16. But I do want to take it one game at a time. My main aim for Chelsea is please just get past around the 16 because we're low-key doing an Arsenal with the amount of times that we get knocked down a lot in around the 16. And it hasn't been noticed enough only because we haven't been in the Champions League consistently enough for it to become a regular pattern but if we can get past the quarterfinals then it really is just taking it a game at a time I do think we have a squad that on our day we can beat anybody and the more we gel together the more this team's chemistry continues to build up I've got no reason to think that we could be up there with the teams that could do it I'm not going to say outright we're going to go win the Champions League but I'd love to see it and I know the same way of all of you as well it could happen it could happen let me not go out there and say it but why not? That's the same thing I've said for so many things this season, like the tower race. Why not? We could go for it. Thiago Silva can play till he's 40. This, this one I definitely agree with because of the way Thiago Silva looks after his body. The guy recovers the same way Cristiano Ronaldo does with a six hour recovery time, as well as a pre-match training as well. The one thing PSG fans were saying when we, when we signed him was that this guy is like Maldini in terms of his longevity and he could play at the top level until he is around 40. So yeah, I do fully agree with this. I was enjoying all of the slander from rival fans saying that Thiago 
Arsenal was dusted and saying that we're hypocrites for laughing at Arsenal for signing Willian and then signing a player four years older than he was. But we already knew both players were made of different sauce. And we knew rival fans would be eating their words within weeks. And look what happened. They're eating their words yet again. So yeah. Unpopular opinion, but I back it. Tammy is actually crucial and undroppable in the team right now. On current form, even when Pulisic is fit. This is a very interesting topic. Does Tammy Abraham start when Christian Pulisic is back or not? I, f I see pros and cons for both. I think for Tammy Abraham, his form has been excellent. And it's also be poor man management to bench him based on the form that he's been showing over the last few weeks. Also take into account, into account Christian Pulisic's injury record. I don't think it'd be smart to force him straight back into the starting 11. I do think we need to manage Christian Pulisic very smartly for the rest of this season. Or we risk the chance of losing him to injuries full stop. So... I kind of wouldn't drop Tammy Abraham, but same way we do also need a direct winger and he's the most direct winger we have by a mile. So, pros and cons. I could see Christian Pulisic not starting as regularly, but also because of the way the Christmas period and the fixture list is looking for the, for the whole of this season. But that kind of works to our benefit with the amount of depth that we have around this squad. I don't think we have to drop Tammy Abraham. I don't think we have to drop Christian Pulisic either. I think we're going to be going through two or three games a week for at least the next six weeks. So there will be rotation throughout the squad. I, t Tammy is undroppable right now. Same thing with Christian Pulisic, so you can't drop him and you can't really drop Timo Werner or Hakim Ziyech either. It's a good selection headache that you want to have. But same way, I think both players will have a chance to prove themselves and you'll know what what, for, what starting 11 you'd want to go with by the end of the Christmas period. But let's just say the Christmas period comes at the perfect point because it means we don't have to play Christian Pulisic too regularly. It does mean we can give Tammy Abraham some rest as well and we'll know which one's the better option for the three out of the two towards the end of the Christmas period. But very good question. I did like that. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank is Chelsea's best ever striker. Not most in influential. Don't confuse that. Um, he's up there. I mean, especially with some of the strikers that we've had over the last 10 years. He is definitely up there. As a pure finisher, he's also up there with the very top. As our best ever striker, though, I don't know, man. I mean, Didier Drogba stands out as the obvious choice as well. Diego Costa, maybe. But that's, that's all a choice of preference, really. I could see if you don't pick Diego Costa, because he was only really around for half a season every season. Um... Who else? You could go for Bobby Tambling, Kerry Dixon, uh, Peter Oscar as well, if you want to go really far back. He's up there, but I, I think that's where I'll leave it. I think he's just up there for now. William is a better player than Zayat. Oh, I hate you, man. <laughs> I absolutely hate you, man. But I will say, the only thing I'll say based on this is, Arsenal cannot be mid-table when we do previews after all the Frank Lampard slander I heard. Mikel Arteta better be above Chelsea. He really better be above Chelsea because you lot say I hold my tongue too much on these previews. Cool. You think I hold my tongue too much? Wait till we do previews if... If Arsenal are mid-table because of all that slander I heard about Frank Lampard being a championship manager and Arteta being levels above this guy. And this guy's playing 10 at the back football and still getting smoked 3-0. I cannot hear it. I really can't. We should sell N'Golo Kante and invest in Rice. That'll keep Ampadu. I agree with the last two parts in investing in Rice and keeping Ethan Ampadu. But selling N'Golo Kante? Nah, not for me, man. Like, I've already said I don't think Kante is a natural DM. I think he's a good DM option when we're facing teams that aren't pressing us. But I do think we still need a natural DM too. But that doesn't mean we sell N'Golo Kante. I see him going straight back into that box-to-box -box midfield role as soon as we get a DM. Ampadu as well. I'd like to see him compete for the spot. I don't know if we're going to make him our outright first choice option. But he deserves the opportunity for his spot as well. But I wouldn't sell N'Golo Kante. I do think N'Golo Kante can be coached to become a better DM. He is a natural box-to-box -box midfielder. But he seems perfect for that McAlealy role once his engine expires. That's the whole reason why I don't want him in that lone DM role for now. Because I think it's a massive waste of his stamina. And I also think he prefers to roam around the field a lot more. But yes, we should be investing in another DM. That I'll agree with you. Captain Cesar Azpilicueta, far better than Reese James, a right back. Wrong. I don't care. Now, at this point, you are wrong with this one. There was a debate last season because of how well Azpilicueta was playing. Nah, Reese James has just smashed this debate clean out the water. And we knew he was going to do it soon. We knew the potential that this guy had. 
Azpilicueta is not better than Reese James. He's He might be better in terms of one-on-one -on -one defending, but that's probably where I'd leave it with him. Other than that, I think Reese James is a lot better offensively. Defensively as well, I think he comes back quicker. And I also think he's just that little bit stronger on the ball as well. So I would go for Reese James over Azpilicueta, but... I mean, fair play. It's, it's a good argument to have. And again, another good selection headache. This is why, say it quietly, but we are in a title race. We have the depth for it. But again, just say it quietly. But guys, that is the end of unpopular opinions for you guys today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Let me know if you guys want to see this England v Ireland watch along. But other than that, take care and up the chels.